Yeah, excited about our, our season, and obviously we're uh, uh, six, seven days into practice. And uh, today we did something, honestly, that, that we wouldn't have done last year. We spent the last hour and 15 minutes today playing four-on-four -four shell with a conversion uh, going down the other end. So it's uh, eight players. Uh, you're live four-on-four. -four. If the offense scores, we stay in that end. If defense gets a stop, we convert and play on the other end. It is a physically really taxing drill. You do all of our defensive sequence. We try to keep the ball on the side, deny the pass to the top. We pressure the basketball. We front in the post. Uh, we trap it when it dribbles baseline. And uh, the point of emphasis was jumping to the ball. So every single time they didn't jump to the ball, we're doing a two-inch push-up at the end of it. And then we're scrimmaging, playing to seven. The losing team is running a single set, being a suicide in 35 seconds. And honestly, uh, the team was not ready for that physically taxing, that tough of mentally tough drill that we did uh, today. We did it for an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, last year, honestly, we, we probably could have done that drill for 15 minutes before it would have fallen apart because we just weren't ready for that, that demand, the level of intensity, the level of, of detail of knowing how to play and what to do. And uh, exciting to be able to throw our freshmen in there today and them honestly make it through. Because today is a type of practice uh, a lot of kids don't make it through because it was that tough and that intense and uh, excited about. I know that's going to pay dividends. The way we're practicing, we had some recruits come in this weekend, and uh, they said one of them had been on five official visits or four official visits, and uh, the mom said, your warm-up was way more intense than any of those practices. Your level of intensity in practice was night and day better than anything that we've seen. And we really believe the way we practice is better and it's more intense than everybody else, and that's going to show dividends in the long run. And, uh, and we're doing it. So it's exciting. You know, obviously, we're very young. We have Amber Moore as our only senior. Uh, but yet, we're better in a lot of ways than last year. I told Celeste when I left, before I left, to pull up last year's practice of six, six days in, and let's watch that when we get back and be able to compare. And I know we're going to see the level, the quickness of play, the level of intensity, the passing. That's one thing I would say. I know we're night and day better passing the basketball uh, than we did last year. So uh, I really believe it's going to show up in the court, and we're going to build this program, make it great. But I know we're practicing the right way, and it's just a matter of time when that shows up and that, that makes us look like the team we want to be. Yeah, that's been exciting, honestly. I know we've sold uh, two to 300 more season tickets uh, than we did last year, 25% increase. Uh, we were the number three team in the country as far as increase in, in fan attendance. Uh, that's what we came here to do. And honestly, that's what we expected to do, and then that's where we're going. It has been. I do really appreciate Like I spoke to a Kiwanis group last week, and they had them raise a hand. Like over half the people had been to a game. And a, a number of group of them had, had bought season tickets, and several people I handed out season tickets after, and probably 10 guys say, I'm going to buy season tickets now that I heard you talk. And, and just the, the buzz in the community has been great. And, uh, and Mike said that. He said, if you build something special here, this community will support it. They love a winner. They love the Illini. And this community will come out. I mean, look at volleyball, 7,000 fans at their games at State Farm Center. That's where we need to go. And honestly, the faster we go there, the better chance we're going to get the top recruits to come play for us. Yeah, I started practice today, and I, I honestly, I've coached uh, basketball for 20-some years and, you know, 17 in the college game, and I don't know that I've ever been at this point and not known. You know, coaches don't say it. We don't say, well, this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, because you want your players to feel like bad. But in your mind, you really have a pretty good idea by this time of year. We really don't. I mean, it, honestly, it's a strange feeling for me because normally, you know, I'm pretty crystal clear and our staff is pretty crystal clear of, of who's going to play and how much, and we're, we're not right now. Amber Moore is going to play. Ivory Crawford is going to play. Those two are, you know, I think they're, they're going to start. Uh, from there, we really don't know. I mean, Sarah Livingston's come in, and, and she came in this summer. I think she was the third post. I thought we had a couple posts in front of her, and right now, she's, she'd be, if we played tomorrow, she'd be starting at the five. Uh, Sarah Hartwell injured her hamstring, I would have said before. She would have been a starting point guard, but she's out for two weeks. We'll have to see how she comes back and how she battles. But, uh, you know, that's really where we're at. Uh, Alexis Smith is, is getting better and, and battling. Taylor Gleason's been a very good freshman for us. Uh, but we really don't know. Mackenzie Piper, Jackie Grant, um, Ashley McConnell came in as a walk-on, and she's done great. So uh, Taylor Tuck and Nia Oden, they're all, they're all battling. 
And so it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. You know, one thing we've done, we've used a lot of guy practice players in the past. This year we're not as much because we want to give them a chance. Today we went for an hour and 15 minutes, all our players, four on four, and it's live. And it's really hard to guard four on four, especially in our system where we pressure the ball and get after it. It's really hard to guard, and, uh, and they did it pretty well today. So we're going to be better in our man defense, and I think that will make our buzz defense uh, better as well. Uh, but it's, it's exciting really not to know, but it's a little nerve-wracking uh, too as a coach. Defense coach, uh, obviously Charisma and Adrian will be hard to replace. Who do you see stepping into their roles, maybe not even on the floor, but as what they meant to the team? Yeah, you know, I think Amber Moore being our only senior is going to step up. And one thing Amber did for us, Amber made big shots last year. Her high school coach told us, and a uh, friend, he said, you know, we called her clutch because she made big shots. And Amber did that throughout last year, and we expect her to be able to do that. I think she's going to score a lot of points for us. You know, I think she's going to get some more touches inside. Then instead of just being a triple uh, three-point threat, she's going to go off the dribble and score. I think Ivory is going to be a lot more consistent. You know, Ivory had games last year. Cleveland State, she scores 32. Later in the year, Michigan, at Michigan, she scores 25. After the Michigan game she comes back and scores two and three of the next two games ivory needs to be more consistent to help our team she's capable of being more consistent and uh, and i think she will um, you know it'd be interesting to see i think sarah hartwell's got a chance to step in she's sitting out last year when we scrimmaged our first couple of scrimmages she was our third leading scorer even though she couldn't play last year and so you know it'd be interesting to see how much she scores in her first year she's certainly capable i mean she's as fast with the basketball as anybody i've ever seen and she's under control and uh, that's a great combination for us. She's a 5'11", really athletic. She squatted 290 this, this summer in the, in the weight room as a 5'11 point guard. You know, that's pretty athletic. So we're pretty excited about what she could bring. You know, I think we are going to score inside. Uh, losing charisma, we, we put in a secondary break, an emotional offense that's really going to make it's better for the five. And uh, our players weren't ready to handle all that last year. We'd have spent the whole year teaching it, and they just would have never looked very good in it. And uh, already, you know, we're starting to show signs of improvement in that. So I think we're going to score with the five. I think Sarah Livingston, you know, yesterday we had a scrimmage, and Sarah Livingston led us in scoring. She had 15 points uh, in five halves. And so um, five five-minute halves, and not even a full game, she scored 15 and led us. You know, Mackenzie Piper had 12 in that scrimmage. Jackie Grant, I think, had 13 in the scrimmage. So we're going to be able to get scoring inside. Uh, it may not look the same as charisma, but we're going to get more touches and we're going to be able to score inside uh, whoever fills that spot. I guess we're a little surprised she's playing completely on the block, uh, offensively and defensively. Or tell me about her role and how she's Yeah, playing. you know, Sarah's a kid uh, in recruiting. If you could figure out which kids could learn, you know, it would so help you in recruiting. She came to our, our camp last year. We had a team camp and then we went right into our elite camp. And she was a little bit on her radar. You know, I knew of her. We asked her to come to the elite camp. And she came to there. And we had a lot of other kids were recruiting and offering. And you could see she's really raw. But I put in dribble drive with her team. Her coach brought her in and asked me to put in that. And uh, immediately, she, you could see she could learn. I started teaching the four and five position. And she learned it better than our players here. And then she started teaching the guards what to do. And then after, you know, a couple minutes in, she's like, couldn't, couldn't I do this? That a great idea. Exactly. That, you know, we weren't quite there yet in teaching it, but she could just see. And she's come even in the weight room. She came in and was pretty steady for a while, and then she just shot straight up and now has been one of our more consistent players. So it's exciting. You never know exactly what you're getting in recruiting, but we knew she could learn. She didn't start playing basketball, I think, until ninth grade, you know, was a Division I volleyball player, and uh, now she's going to be an incredible basketball player. So it's really exciting. She wants to learn. She's competing. We had the Navy SEALs come in, and uh, everybody goes to do it, the, the frozen push-up. And immediately he says, wow, look at that kid, Sarah Livingston, that is perfect. And Sarah wants to do it right. She wants to learn. The other day I stopped and said, well, why do you think she's on the first team to the rest of our players? And you know, they said, well, she plays hard and she's doing this or that. No, it, 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 she's doing all those things, but then so are you guys. But she learns. She, you show her to her one time and she picks it up. And she's, I mean, I, I'm just shocked at how far she's come in a short period. Again, she was our third post when she got here, probably throughout the summer. And I, I went and, and spoke to her coach, high school coach. I said, I'm not so sure. I know she's going to get it and she's going to be good, but it's happening pretty fast for her, which is exciting. How hard is that sort of thing to evaluate in recruiting? Yeah, I wish I was, honestly, I wish there was a way. The one thing the NCAA could help us with it is allow us to have a kid come here and be in a practice and let us coach the kid. You know, you get that at the elite camp, but nowadays the top 100 kids, they don't go to the elite camps. It does maybe, maybe when they're young, you can get them, but you don't get the sophomores, juniors, because everybody asks them and they're so busy. You, you can't get those kids to come to elite camp. But if you could, if we could coach them, like the NAI level, you know, we bring in a recruit and they'd play with your team or they'd practice with your team. 
and you could really that really helped him value it saved the NCAA it save us so much recruiting money you could out of our budget Jason's here you know we could cut down our recruiting budget if they just change that rule and allow us to come in and, and be able to coach them in practice I think that'd be a great change uh, but that is it's a huge key but when you're watching them on the court it, it's hard always to tell whether they can learn now we watch their whether they're high character high integrity I watch what they're like when they go to the bench you sit right behind their bench I watch see how coachable they are I watch what they're like with their teammates but sometimes it's hard to tell and honestly coaches aren't always honest with you I really appreciate the coaches that are you know I did ask uh, an AU coach last year we had a kid from Indiana uh, that went to a Big Ten school and I said can this kid learn because it seems like she's struggling to pick up plays and he said I have to take her out late in the game because she doesn't remember our plays well we never recruited that kid because we want kids that can learn Yeah, you know, Taylor's a kid that just believes in herself. Um, she's a kid that everything has gone right. Straight A student, should have been the Miss Basketball for the state of Michigan, won back-to-back -back state championships. You know, that one thing we told her, and she's struggling a little bit with this, is we're going to put you in situations to fail. Taylor's never failed in her life. Everything she's done, she's done, she's been perfect at. And for the first time, today we're doing four on four shell, and she's getting stretched, and it's really hard, and then she's failing some. But she's a kid, you know, she made three threes in the scrimmage yesterday. Three of our, our six threes that we made in the scrimmage, she made. She believes it's going in. And that's a, a really powerful thing as a player, especially a, as a freshman coming in, when Taylor believes good things should happen. Now, she spends probably more t as much time in the gym as anybody out there, but she really believes the shot should go in when she shoots it, and that's a really good – we need that, honestly. Yeah, and honestly, that's something we're trying to develop here, and that's something we said, you know, last year. That the faster we have a player-led program, the better this program is going to be. We had that at Green Bay. Our top players would challenge the rest of the team, and they would every day be really vocal in practice. When they, if you'd watch a pickup game while we were at Green Bay, it would look just like whether we're in the gym or not. It looked really similar. We don't have that yet here. We're having to lead it. The coaching staff is having to pull from the players to get them to play as hard as we want. Um, but we're headed there. I would say Kylie Simmons, our transfer from Missouri, she's, she's our best talker. And she does it right. Honestly, the first six days of practice, she was our best player and worked harder than anybody else. So Kylie can challenge the kids, and they're going to respect it. You know, Amber and Ivory need to be more consistent. You know, they need to be more consistent with their talking and their effort before. You can't challenge the other players unless you're doing it right. And that's one thing we did last spring. We sat down with every player and said, tell us what you would correct a teammate on. What's something that you do right? You don't have to be perfect, but what's something you do right most of the time that you can go and correct your teammates on? And honestly, they didn't have much of a list. Uh, honestly, most of them were, uh, there's really not nothing that I do right all the time. Well, that's something we need to change. Amber Moore said, well, I know I could correct somebody on being in the gym because Amber's in the gym all the time. Well, great, but we want a laundry list. You know, our top players, you ought to be able to correct kids on jumping to the ball, on you talking on defense, on your level of intensity, being the first one on the floor. You, you ought to be able to correct your teammates on those things, but you have to do it first. You know, it's not going to, on a women's team, it's not going to go over real well if you, you know, get mad at a teammate and they haven't seen you doing it right most of the time. And so that's something we're working towards. It, they're not there. We're, we're challenging Amber and Ivory the last couple of days in practice. I've stopped it several times. Said, Ivory, when are you going to lead? When are you going to show everybody what you're capable of? And so we're asking him to do it, and hopefully it's a work in progress. Uh, you're a Harwell currently on the sideline for a while. You, you still obviously have Alexis uh, Smith at the point. Who, is, who would you consider next in line at the point? Yeah, honestly, that's a, that we're not there. And honestly, that we're, uh, Ivory probably would play a backup point. Taylor Gleason could play some point. Um, we're recruiting point guards. Yeah, it's something we do. We recruit a point guard every year. Uh, so far of the eight kids that, uh, well, next year will be 11 kids that we've signed. Uh, five of them would be considered point guards. And so we're trying to bring in more point guards. The, the program was in dire straits in the point guard position. Uh, we're trying to change that. We brought in three really good point guards, but, you know, it's something we have to work on and change. This is a position that's... Yeah, we need, we need Alex and Sarah to stay healthy. You know, both of those can play a lot of minutes because they're in great shape. Um, but we really, we need both those guys to stay healthy. And we're, we're working on developing. I think Ivory could play at some. Taylor Gleason played point in high school, but it's hard for a freshman to come in and play at this level. When, when you looked at last year's final statistics, was there a, an area perhaps that you two took note of and said, we absolutely have to get better at this? 
Yeah, I would say taking care of the basketball. You know, at, at Green Bay, we were the number one or number two team in the country in turnover margin. Now, we did a great job of forcing turnovers. We set the Big Ten, the record of the history of women's basketball in the Big Ten with 25.6 turnovers per game. But we didn't take as good a care of basketball as we'd like. We, we were, I think, plus five in the turnover margin. We want to be plus eight, plus nine, plus ten in the turnover margin category. Uh, and I think that will really help our team getting more shots. Um, the other thing is shooting a better percentage. We had uh, only a couple of players really shoot a good percentage. We need to shoot a better percentage as a team. Better shot selection will help that as well. Any other questions? Thanks for coming out.